Chapter 2. Decentralized Autonomous Companies, or DAX. Let's start by exploring the concept of decentralized autonomous companies. From now on, we'll call them DAX. We will explore this concept by looking at the words themselves in reverse order. First of all, a DAC is a company. That means it has many similar components that ordinary com companies have as well. DACs have revenues. They have costs. They have either a profit or a loss. They have employees. They have shareholders. Shareholders have voting rights. They have a charter, a set of rules by which the company operates. They have a product. And hopefully, most of all, they have customers. Let's have a look at the next word, autonomous. Autonomous means that these companies are self-governing and are not subject to control from outside sources. In fact, they have built-in defense mechanisms to protect themselves from those outside influences that would seek to regulate them. And finally, decentralized means the company does not exist in one or even a few centralized locations. It is distributed on many computers all around the world, and within each computer is the entirety of the company. Even a successful attack against many instances of the company is futile as it easily replicates itself and heals. This feature makes them extremely secure and far less vulnerable to attacks. The first time I heard the phrase decentralized autonomous company, it all sounded a bit wishy-washy and didn't make a lot of sense to me. I mean, how do you have an autonomous company that runs by itself? But then I, find, I found out that I was already very familiar with a DAC. In fact, Bitcoin was the world's first DAC. I think it will help us to examine this comparison. Bitcoin has a product. It is a, it's a payment service. It competes with banks, Visa, PayPal, Western Union, and others for sending payments from one party to another all around the world. It has revenues. Bitcoin charges small fees on some transactions. Bitcoin has shareholders. The, he, the shareholders are you and I, the people who actually own Bitcoin. Let's say you own 1% of all Bitcoin in existence. That is like owning 1% of stock in the Bitcoin company. As the company grows, hopefully the share price goes up. If the company shrinks or fails, then the share price might drop. Bitcoin has employees. They are called miners. Miners secure the network and facilitate these payments. Bitcoin has costs. It pays those employees via two mechanisms. The first is the fees we spoke about earlier. 100% of the fees earned by the Bitcoin company are passed on to the miners as salary. The second is through the dilution of shares. Bitcoin regularly creates new Bitcoin called block rewards and gives it to the miners to supplement their salary. Because Bitcoin is also a currency, we call that inflation. But in the context of a DAC, it is called shared dilution. Eventually, this dilution will reduce to zero and miners will have to work for fees only. Of course, Bitcoin has customers. Every person that sends a Bitcoin payment is a customer. Bitcoin has voting rights. When changes to the system like code updates and hard forks are proposed, the community decides if they wish to accept those changes. The community of miners who are paid to secure the network currently holds arguably the majority of Bitcoin's voting rights, although it's not a formalized process. While some miners hold Bitcoin, some do not. In this way, it is Bitcoin's employees and not its owners that hold Bitcoin's voting rights. Through the lens of a DAC, this is not desirable. It would be preferable if the shareholders had voting rights. Bitcoin has a charter. That is the Bitcoin code that all parties agree to operate by. As you can see, the analogy of Bitcoin being a company is very useful and quite accurate. Bitcoin is also decentralized and autonomous. And therefore, Bitcoin is the world's first DAC. You now have a definition of a DAC as well as an example of a DAC that you are probably already familiar with. I really hope you enjoyed this video in the BitShares 101 series. If you want to help BitShares achieve its mission of securing life, liberty and property for all, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Share it on social media like Facebook and Twitter. And you can click on the link over here to subscribe to this channel for future updates. To watch the remainder of this video series, click on the thumbnail below me or watch the Getting Started series that will walk you through downloading your free wallet and creating your free account. See you in the next video.